Hey everybody and welcome to the last exercise in chapter 3, bean counting. You can get the nth character or letter from a string by writing the string at n. The return value will be a string containing only one character, for example b. Man, I, whew, I just don't like that because it's like where do you find b here? Um, I think they're assuming that there's some other string that you've done this to where the, you know, whatever letter you asked for is actually b. Now the first character has position zero, which causes the last one to be found at position string length dot, uh, string dot length minus one. In other words, a two character string has the length two and its characters have position zero and one. Write a function count b's that takes a string as its only argument and returns a number that indicates how many uppercase b characters there are in the string. Uh, next, write a function that called count character, sorry, count char, that behaves like count b's, except it takes a second argument that indicates the character that is to be counted, rather than counting only uppercase b characters. Rewrite count b's to make use of this new function. Ooh, fun. Okay, so our code here. So we got two functions we're going to write, count b's. Count b's takes in a string and is going to do stuff. And we want a function called, let's try to scroll it down a little bit. Oh, it's going to get tricky. Count char, which takes in a string and a character. And also does stuff. OK. So first thing they want us to do is to count b's. So what I would say our order of operations is going to be uh, create a result, ver create a result set to 0. At the very end, we're going to return our result. And boy, have we done loops yet? I think we did do loops. I really want to make sure that we did loops first, though. Um, let's go to just vocabulary function environment loop. OK, cool. So we have done loops. And do we have any for loops or just while loops? While, while, for loop. Excellent. So we know how to do for loops, so I'm going to be using a for loop. Um, but that's not really that big of a deal. All we need to say is that we're going to iterate or loop over the string. Now on line five, I'm going to indent it. And the assumption here is that this is taking place inside of the string. So I'm going to say if current character. And all that's going to be is just the string at the value that I've currently iterated to. So I'm iterating from the start to the end of the string. Whatever the current character is, is whatever the current iteration has made it to. So if current character is a B. And we want to increment our result by one and then return the result at the end. I'm going to comment out, well, actually, it'll just give us an error, so that's no big deal. Um, all right, so create a result, set it to equal to zero. We're going to start using let result equal zero, uh, return result, loop over the current string uh, for let i, i is going to be our indexing variable, and i is going to be zero, remember from here. 0 to the length of string minus 1. So if that's the case, we need i to stay less than string.length. Or, if it's easier for you to, to picture it, it needs to be less than or equal to string length minus 1. Since uh, it is not difficult for me to make that connection because I've written hundreds of for loops, well, I've written way too many for loops, um, mainly because they're not that great of a loop. But anyway, um, we'll go ahead and just make it less than string.length. You'll see this very often. You'll also see it in arrays, which are coming up. Then we're going to increment i each time the loop iterates. So we'll go ahead and wrap our pseudocode. If current character is b. So if, and current character is just going to be that, remember this thing, string at n? That's going to be the same story. Uh, the reason I don't like the way that they've written this is because it uh, belies the fact, or it hides or obscures the fact that you can call this, you can use this syntax uh, here on a variable that represents a string. So string here is our parameter. Um, should we change this? Maybe we should make this something like input. Now nah, we'll leave it as string. So if string is equal to uh, b, and we've made a mistake, right? We don't need to check the entire string. We want the current character. So that's how that's going to be accessed. Then if this is the case, we're going to increment our result by 1. So we'll say result plus equals 1. Or we could say result plus plus. Or result is equal to result plus 1. All of those are going to get the same idea across. At this point, I would I would say that what we've done is satisfactorily solving the problem. We're looping over the string. Current character is a b. 
we're going to increment the result by 1, then return the result at the end. So for BBC, it should be uh, 2, and we're probably going to get an error on count car or something like undefined or whatever. Cool. So let's add in a couple extra Bs. Oh boy, didn't count. 2, 3, 4. That's not 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We got 5, 8, 10. So this should be 10. And it is. Excellent work. So we'll go ahead and return it back to what it originally was. Awesome. So now we want count car, count char, to do the same thing, except rather than checking for a B, it's going to, um, interesting. Write a function count B, next row function count char, except take a second argument, rewrite count Bs to make use of this new function. Oh, cool, okay, cool. So what we're going to do is, I would, I would say that this count char is exactly the same as the function that we've just written here. So I'm literally just going to copy everything, paste it in there, and we're going to mess with it once we get it there. So here's the only difference that I would say. If current character is a B, it needs to be if current character is, uh, we'll say, matches input character. Mm, I also, I don't like this just as character now. All of a sudden, character seems a little bit, if current character matches input character, hmm. No, actually, that's fine. So if current character matches the input character, we are going to need to change this from capital B to character. If that's the case, then everything stays the same. We're creating result, set it to zero, increment over the, or yeah, incre increment, iterate over the string length. If the current character in the string is equal to the input character, which it is, sorry, which, which is, that's what our code's saying, then we want to increment the result by one and then return the result. So we go ahead and run this. We're looking good. Let's go ahead and add in a couple extra Ks. This should be six now. It should be seven. Looking good. So this is counting Ks. Let's just make sure it's not counting extra stuff. Cool, 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 cool. So let's, oh boy, what did it start as? Kakerlak. I wonder what Kakerlak is. Anyway, run this, make sure it's the same. Cool. Now they want us to rewrite count Bs. Now, I don't know if you watched the video on math.min where we did the cheat version of the function. Uh, but this is kind of what they want us to do. So essentially, we need to just get rid of all of this. We need to say return a call to count char with string, we'll say with input and b. Quite simple. Actually, I hate when people say that because it's quite simple to me because I've done this a bunch of times, but it might not be simple to you. So if it's not, it doesn't mean anything. If it's not simple to you after you've done it 70 times, then maybe it means something, but it might be that you need to 120 times to do it. So repetition makes happy programmers. Um, oh, that's not really a good phrase. Repetition doesn't make happy programmers. In fact, programmers are usually instituted or implemented to re remove repetition. Oh, confusing times. Anyway, return count car, we're gonna be called on the string, which is our input, and an argument, which is gonna be the uppercase B. So this is essentially going to run this function, whereas the change that we made from the original version of count b's to this version of count char is essentially the same idea just in reverse, and we're calling the function here, making use of the two parameters that we have available. So nothing changes because we have successfully done this. Let's add in ack, ack and it still works. Uh, b, b, c, g still works, and we are in good shape. Uh, so let's remove this to be C. Let's make this what it was originally. We'll copy all of this. And you don't have to do this part. You can probably just go and check out the gist that I've done. But what I would say is that reading is one thing, but when you're reading a book like Eloquent JavaScript, diligent note taking, running through the examples, watching some goofball read through it, these can all kind of help. Just give you a little bit of context and help some of the passages be a little bit more memorable. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. So this next one's going to be bean. Why is it doing that? Bean counting. Is that one word or two? Bean counting, two. Uh, in case you're curious, on a Mac, if I hit control tab, I can shift tabs. That's what I'm doing when you see that happen. So sorry about that, but it's a habit at this point. So now that we have bean counting, looks like we are skipping a line in between those for that one and not for that one. So let's move this there and paste in the rest of our bean counting. Excellent. I would suggest that that is all sewn up. Looks nice. So there's the notes for our chapter three. All the exercises are done. All the videos are over. Uh, well done. Take a break. Relax. Chapter four coming soon. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.